nation. Hebrew Kingdom Builder. Things in, out, down. Can everybody see that? Everybody can see. All right, everybody can see. Hallelujah. Phasing out doubt to determine the appointed times. Let's build a foundation. I like to build foundations so we can build on it. Hallelujah. And you have a foundation is always scripture. If you got the solid foundation, then what you build it, they're going to be shaping. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 14 through 18. Genesis chapter 1. Remember, make sure you're looking at your Bible. Don't just take my word for it because I can put anything up here. Make sure you look into what's being told to you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 14 through 18. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, say signs and for seasons, say seasons and for days, say days and for years, say years so in other words that sun that sits in the sky and it just up there to give you heat and light how do we know? they are put in the heavenlies for a reason how do we know? And that, that moon you see also, an angel just did, just look beautiful in a black sky. It's there for a reason, say a reason. Verse 15, and let them be for lights in the form of heaven to give light upon earth, and it was so. And God made two, say two, two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, and the lesser, I like to put, lesser of the greater. Light to rule the night, he made the stars also. So, how many different parts did we talk about? We talk about the what? The sun, right? We talk about the moon, right? What was the last thing we talked about? The stars. The stars. All of them must work together, say together. That's important. The stars are part of it. Right? Now don't you go out read your future in the stars and all that. Because we're going to talk about the difference between astronomy and astrology. It's a big difference. How do we know? So he made how many great lights? Two. Two. Say two. Two, two great lights. Not three. Because one of them don't supposed to be great. One of them don't supposed to outshine the other. But sometimes they do. Uh oh. Verse 17, and Yah set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. Say rule. rule. To rule over the day and rule over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And Yah saw that it was good. Say it's all good. Psalms. It's all good. Let's keep it with Psalms. Chapter 136, verses 8 through 9. Psalms chapter 136, verses 8 through 9. You need time to get here. Psalm chapter 136, verses 8 through 9. You need to get here and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now right, the sun to rule by day for his mercy and doing forever. The moon and the rock. Stars to rule by night for his mercy endure it forever. Say forever. Do you know how long forever it is? It's forever. I say it's forever. It's forever. Ain't it funny how Christians know hell is going to be forever? But they don't know the feast days is forever? Oh, we're talking about it. Psalms chapter 104, verse 19. Psalms chapter 104, verse 19. Psalms 104, verse 19. You gotta say hallelujah. 
The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the cones. He appointed the what? The moon for what? Seasons. You know that word season means more. Say more. More. The sun knoweth is going down. So based on of this one scripture right here, that totally deletes the Enoch character. Because the Enoch character don't go by the moon to the term of these days. Oh man, that just... Oh, we didn't talk about that. Let's go. Exodus chapter 1 verse 2 and we'll skip down to chapter 13 verse 1. Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 through 2 and then we'll go into chapter 13 verse 1. And Yahweh was called unto Moses in Aaron and in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, say this month, this month. shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first, say first, first month of the year to you. This day came out in the month of Abib. And we all know the first month that we celebrate is Abib. Hallelujah. We don't do January, right? We do, we celebrate new life and everything becomes new. Hallelujah. Like when a butterfly becomes new and the, the new plants grow up and the tree get new leaves. That's the new say new year. Not January when everything is dead and cold. Now, I know y'all don't even know what cold is. I know something like it was cold last night. No, we go up in New York and, and in Chicago and, and it's cold. That's cold. That's cold. Yeah, I don't even know what cold is. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you. So, we know we celebrate the new month and the month of the bear. Now, notice the most high is giving at this moment Israel a calendar. Now, let me be clear. Let me say this on the side. Ready? There is no Hebrew word for the month calendar. The word calendar don't even exist in the Hebrew word. Mm. So man, why are we we gonna talk about that? Because the most high has set up a whole design for us to not even use calendars. But we'll talk about it. Psalm of chapter 104, verse 19. Psalm of chapter 104, verse 19. He appointed the uh, Moon for what? Seasons, Moabs. And the sun, I just got to read that. My the sun knows it's going down. Sirach, chapter 43, verses 6 to 8. You'll find this in the Bible. Sirach, chapter 43, verses 6 to 8. He made the moon also to serve in her seasons. They see me. For a declaration of times in a sign of the world. For the moon is the sign of peace, say peace. A light that decreases in her perfection. Now people stop and say, see, see, when it decreases, that means it's becoming perfect. But let's keep reading. Say keep reading. Keep reading. The moon is called after her name. Increases and increases. Increasing wonderfully in her changing. So if you don't know about the moon, I don't think I have any, which I should have. The moon goes through phases. It can wax, it's you have a uh, uh, high moon, you have full moon, you have crescent moon, you have dark moon, you have what you call the new moon. And it changes as time goes on. It's like a clock. It can wax. Or it can win. Say win. I should have put that in to, to, to show. She would just look that up. All right. We laid the foundation. Let's get into it. Let's look at some quick facts. All right. One fact we need to know. Israel has always, say always, oh. has always used the moon to determine the motives. Now I'm saying that for reasons, believe it or not, there are groups of Hebrews that don't use the moon. They use what's called the Enoch calendar. And let me just tell you briefly on the Enoch calendar, 
um, consists of 364 days. And if you follow it in that calendar, they don't even do Shabbat on the seventh day. Depending on how they calendar go, they Shabbat the whole year can fall on Tuesday. And they celebrate Shabbat every Tuesday. It's all calculation here. But with the Enoch calendar, if you keep following, let's say you follow the Enoch calendar for 20 years, let's say your support is today. And let's fast for 20 years forward, you end up celebrating your Moet in around December, Sukkot. That's why the Enoch calendar came first. It came work. Now, to, to test you on that, you can go to what's called timeandbeat.com. Time right there. Time and date.com. That is an excellent source. Because what it does is it shows you information of the heavens. And on top of that, you can just go outside and test what they say. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you don't even have to take this wrong word. You can just look into time and date.com, figure it out, and then go, go outside and test what time and date is in. That's just a little bit. Next fact, you need, say you need. Yeah. You need the sun, the moon, the stars to determine time. Say time. Yeah. Now we're not talking about the time that we go by as far as I watch, but we're talking about the seasons, the moments, the moment beings. How do we go? And why do you need that? Because Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 16, told us the three things that operate together. Say together. Next step. Israel is powerless. Say powerless. Israel is powerless when they don't use the structure designed by God to determine the time. And y'all don't understand that as we get further into it. Whoever had this is important. Whoever, whatever nation had Israel in captivity, that's who influenced their calendar makeup at that time. That's important. How many captivities have you been in? Seven. 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 Our calendar has changed seven different times. So when you look into the calendar, you just can't go back to when the Shiites were on earth. You got to go back to the ancient times and look into it. Hallelujah. And you gotta look at to see, okay, what was Israel influenced by when they was in Babylon? What was they influenced by when they was in Greek? What was they influenced by when they was in Persian captivity? You have to analyze all of those and then make a sound fair decision. How are you? So, the purpose of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Let's get into it. They are here, they were placed to determine the signs, the days, and the years, according to Genesis chapter 1. Right? Get right there, real quick. Oh, you can't see me. No, you're good. No, you're good. You're good. Keep going. Okay. The word season, say season. You will look up a strong chorus. H4150 means Moab, or in more ancient term, Moab, which means a point in time, meeting, or place, or city. That's what that word season means. Are we up? So, we are celebrating a Moab, right? So that means we are set on a point in time to meet our Elohim. Are we up? So when we are set to meet our Elohim at our point in time, we have to make sure everything is right before we go walk into the Holy Zones. Are we up? That's why you put the day of atonement aside to get yourself right before he come in tabernacle with you. Hallelujah. But then before that, he allows you to blow the trumpets to warn the people that I'm coming down to tabernacle with my people. Not just warn the Gentiles, but also warn Israel. Hallelujah. Because judgment is going to be here first bit. In the house. Oh, wow. Does that mean church? No. no I know you know that. <laughs> So we're going through all this so you get back on the stand. So when we get into it, it's all going to be sick. Hallelujah. You have to know the difference between astronomy and astrology. Right? Astronomy is good. Say astronomy is good. I know. I know the church told you, you know, you look at them stars and the moons. 
Don't you? That day is on your day to give life. Because God said, let there be light, and that was it. They lied. Who's going to say they lied? See, you were put in a system which was a church that designed to keep you at a glass ceiling, right? So you wanted to go up and reach the most high so far, right? But that's why everyone is sitting in here because you felt if you were in the church and everybody wasn't, you felt that inkling, that function, that urge, it got to be some more than this, right? Because when everybody was falling out and their wigs fall off and they pick their wigs up and put it back on, you know, and they fall back out because they did back on, but they're doing all that, you don't really think, you I know, it got to be more than this. See, one thing we also got to understand is that the earth agrees with us. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again. The earth agrees with our very makeup. Yeah. See, that's why, see, when you look at plants, when plants grow up, that means they are alive, right? Uh -huh. When they grow down, that means they're not dead, right? It's a reason why when your hair grows, it grows up towards the sun because it's a green of nature. So you ain't gotta go get that 32 piece. <laughs> How many years you got it? You a hater. But it breaks through the most I made you. How many of us? I'm not saying you can't go get those. I'm not gonna give you more. But it breaks with the most I made you. See, when we came over in America, they said, nappy hair ain't a thing. Right? Brown hair is so strong, white skin living. You know what? Somebody had yeah, that said 32 piece. All right, let's go. Astronomy versus astrology. Astronomy is the study of the heavenly body, sun, moon, that's a typo, moon, and stars to determine the signs and the times and the seasons. Okay? That's astronomy. That's what our forefathers did. That's what Abraham did. They did astronomy. Say astronomy. So it's nothing wrong with you growing up looking at the moon and determining what season or time it's in. As a matter of fact, that's the way we were originally determined the times and the seasons. Because we didn't have what's called a calendar. Say a calendar. Astrology. Say astrology. Astrology is the study of the heavenly body, sun, moon, stars to determine future or human events. Horoscopes, say horoscopes. No, you shouldn't be reading no horoscopes. How do we know? Oh man, somebody got the newspaper in their tent right now. Hey, God. Hey, you better get it out of here. How do we know? Because we don't look at those things to determine what our future is. We look to the Most High so He can tell us what our future is. How do we know? So there's a big difference between astrology and astronomy. The Bible forbids us to practice astrology, but not astronomy. Reference Isaiah chapter 47, verse 13. We can't practice none of that witchcraft, none of that voodoo, burning sage, none of that foolishness. How we are? Definitions. These are key definitions to look at. Alright? As we move forward, we have to know these definitions. Alright? First definition is interclination. Say interclination. Okay, I'm, I'm going to explain all this. It's not, it's not that deep. Interclination is the insertion of days or months into a calendar to bring it into line with the solar year. Say solar year. And you also know what solar year is. Solar year basically only goes off the sun. It goes strictly off the sun. Right? Like our Gregorian calendar. Our Gregorian calendar, the reason why you have 30 days in some months, 31 days in some months, 28 days in some months, because they do what's called interpretation. Got it? Any questions on this? Then you have what's called equinox. Say equinox. Equinox is very, very, very important too. Equinox happens either 
to two different times of the year. Say two. That happens during spring and it happens during fall. Right? This is when the sun rises at exactly 90 degrees and it sets at exactly 270 degrees. Right? Say that again. The equinox happens two times a year. Now the equinox, there's a spring equinox and a fall equinox. Follow me. This is going to make sense. Right? Those are what you call the turn of the year. Okay? The spring equinox usually happens around March or April. Right? The fall equinox happens around September or October. And at those two times when it happens, guess what? You don't even really need the internet to determine when that happens. All you have to do is go get a compass around the time frames, around, around spring and fall, point it to the sun. If the sun rises at 90 degrees and sets at 270, that means you're at a turn of the year. How many people do that? Well, I'm glad you learned right now. Hallelujah. So, when I'm, I'm telling you all this, is you can go outside and test it. The sun will never rise at night in 27 degrees over two times a year. Now, this is very important because this is a turn of year which determines when we start our time. How we up? See, because Israel, as I said, you know, the two have never went on a calendar system. When I say calendar, they never had, oh, this is the month of a bid, and this is the first day. Go look at the, the calendar. They didn't have one of those. They went strictly off of nature. Say nature. nature. Oh, man, I'm going to get into it. Let's go. Then you have what's called the solar calendar. Say solar calendar. Solar calendar. Now this calendar, this is the type of calendar I go strictly on the sun. In order to determine the times, what do you need? Let me see you guys. Earth, moon, sun, moon, and stars. Together. Because the most high made them together, and he wants them to work together. Hallelujah. So you can't separate one from the other, or your time will be off. Solar calendar is any dating system based on the seasonal year of approximately 365 and one fourth days. The time it takes for the earth to revolve once around the sun. Okay? Then you have what's called the lunar year. Say lunar year. Lunar year. The lunar year is very important too. It is a, the lunar year strictly goes off the moon only. The moon only. You cannot go off the moon because you need the sun and the stars too. Hallelujah. The lunar year is a dating system based on a year consisting of synodic months. Example, complete cycles of the phases of the moon. So each month, a moon goes through a whole phase and comes back full. Right? If we follow the moon only, you will have to add additional months every three years in order to stay in season. So in other words, if we just go by the moon, then every three years, our more time frame will be on. Everybody follow me? Uh, don't, don't, don't look at these words and think it ain't, it ain't that deep, y'all. We're going to make it make sense. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Then you have what's called the side world year, which deals with the stars. Say the stars. The side world year is the time taken by the sun to return in the same place its annual apparent journey against the background of the stars. Now, the stars have a time frame. I know you do a horoscope, but those are actually time frames of the stars. And you will notice the, the spring moeds or, or like Passover, the Passover or Pesach moeds will always fall in line with the star year frame. So the stars, the month, and the, the stars, the moon, and the sun always work together. I keep saying that because you, you got to get calendar out of your mind. Yeah, but today is October, like we had 
Some guy said to him, Houston job. Yeah, but don't you supposed to be doing trumpets on the first day of the, of the uh, seventh month? Why are you doing it October 2nd? Because you're looking at a calendar. We have to look at the moon phase to determine the Moab. Say the Moab. Now, we don't need the sun to determine the Moab. Because the Bible made it clear. He said the moon are for the what? Moab or seasons, right? That's what the moon is there for. But it still works together with the sun and the stars. Ah, let's go. All of you must work together to determine the times and the seasons. So, let's get into this real quick. Names of the months. This is very important. Alright? Names of the month. No, we talk about September, October, November. We talk about that. Right? We talk about the great months. Hallelujah. So, there's a difference between Hebrew months and Babylonian months. Some of y'all probably doing Pesach on the month of Nisan. We don't do Nisan. We do a bid. Hallelujah. Let's go through the Babylonian months. You have what's called Nisan. Say Nisan. You have Ayah. I don't know how to say that. Ayah. Say Ayah. You have Sivan. You have Tammuz. That should give it away right there. Right? Tammuz. You have Av. You have Alul. You have Tashiri. You have Chesimon. You have Gesket. Whatever. Gesket. Yeah. You have Temi. And you have Shabbat. Some people might say, look, that's not like Shabbat. No. The most I only looked at four months out of the whole year. Say four. You never had names for the other ones. You know why? Because those were considered the dry seasons. He didn't care about those months. Why? Because during these four months are where the appointed times were going to fall. That's all he cared about. Now, if you look at Hebrew, are uh, Hebrew months, or oh, he got a dog. The Hebrew months, during the spring, or vernal equinox, vernal is another word for spring, the spring or vernal equinox, when we just talk about equinox, right? What is equinox? The turn of the, the year, right? When the sun rises at 9 degrees, it sets at 207, right? So, our spring months, or vernal equinox months, is a bid, say a bid. You'll find that in Exodus chapter 13, verse 4. Then you have Zip, say Zip. You'll find that in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. Then you have the fall or the autumn equinox. So, the most high we're going to care about spring and fall. That's why I say, yo, pray not that your flight come in the winter. Because that ain't in my time. Fall and autumn equinox. There's only how many months left? Two, because four minus two is what? Two, you smart, I don't care what they say. No, I'm just kidding. The next one you have is Ethiopian, say Ethiopian. That's First Kings 82. And the next one you have is Bull, say Bull. Bull will be the next one that we will be going into. You'll find that in First Kings chapter six, verses 38. Now you will see a lot of people call the first month Nisan. Nisan is not the correct term for the first month of the Hebrew month. Because that was taken from Babylon. Say Babylon. Any questions? Very good. I mean, you get it. Hallelujah. The change of the times. The change of the times. We go through all this and we're going to get into which calendar for the moon, crescent moon, and we're going to talk about all that, alright? Um, now, real quick, uh, that was a great point about the, uh, the Babylonian calendar and how it had a Nissan and things like that. But one thing that comes up a lot is that Nissan is in the Bible. So you read the scripture and you say, oh, well, it says the month of Nissan right here in the book of Nehemiah or something like that. 
The reason why they were doing it is because you're talking about people who were in Babylon or just coming out of Babylon. So they're writing to an audience who knew Nissan. It's just like me saying, hey man, a month of a week or March, we're going to keep the pace out this year. Many of y'all ask us, what are y'all going to be keeping us in code? I'll tell y'all it's October. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that's what y'all understand. But it's really biblically, it's not. And that's why you still will see Nissan. You'll see some of those Babylonian names in the scriptures, but that don't always mean that's what you're supposed to go by. Just want to throw that out. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's important. Because as he said, during Nehemiah's time, there were random people that were in captivity. That only understood this lingo. It's like, if you go speak to a Christian and tell them you pass over that bit, they're like, what? You have to say April or March, right? So you have to speak in their terms, all right? Good point, Lord. Change of the time. A solar calendar was followed during Noah's time. And we're going to pull about scripture. A solar calendar, okay? Because remember, they didn't start using the moon for their Moabs until now. To the most high brought them out of Egypt. And he said, This month shall be a first month unto you, the month of Abed, right? So prior to that, going back to Noah, based off the scripture, because remember, the sun is 365 and one more, right? Okay? Everybody follow me? So I mean, it was 38 months within that time frame. Remember ours, even though it's 365, we got 28, 31, 30. We talking about straight 30 months. Okay? I mean 30 months, 30 days. Right? Because it seemed to be on a 30-day calendar cycle. Why is that? Let's look at the scripts. Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. Right? It said, in the second month, or the 17th day, is when the flood started. The what month? Second month on the 17th day is when the flood what? Started, right? Genesis chapter 7 verse 24 says the, the time frame of the waters dwelling on the earth was 150 days. That's important because the next one will make sense. So the Bible says the waters dwelt on the earth for 150 days. When did the flood start? Second month on the 17th day. Genesis chapter 8, verse 14. The day that the ark rested was on the seventh month on the 17th day. So that may be how many months? Five months. Which shows that Noah operated on a 30-day calendar. Make sense? Okay, don't make sense in the right, let me know. Alright. So, we're talking about the change of time. When most of in, when we start going to do it. While in Egypt, Israel followed a solar calendar. Why? Because Egypt worshiped the sun god. So they were strictly on the sun, solar calendar. Right? Yah then comes to Israel while in Egypt and gives them another calendar. Say another calendar. A lunar calendar within the one that they have. Why? Because the sun and the moon has to work together. He couldn't just say go by this moon because they would have been off. So he added the moon within the sun. Okay, we give you an We have a going by the Lord calendar. We have a whole year, right? Within that year, we have years. You have what's called a school year. Say school year. And based on the school year, you get to turn in the times. We start school this month, and we end school this month, and that's the whole year of school. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So within that solar calendar, he implemented the lunar calendar. Why? So that they can keep the Moabs. Exodus 12 and 1. Wait, let me not go here. He had to use the moon so they could keep the Moabs. Why? Because the moon was created for the Moabs. See, come on, I know y'all got it. Come on. So he had to implement the moon. Now I'm implementing the moon. 
right? Because all rules agree with this. That's what we implemented the moon. Ears where they shake. The different phases is right here. Here's one of the reasons why I'm going for it. Exodus 12 and 1. If I'm going to implement the moon, I got to be able to show you the moon. All right, that was probably too deep. Bro. If I'm going to implement the moon and show you the moon, I, I, I have to show you the moon in order to implement it. Right? Because you got to understand that during this time, right before this, it was total darkness in Egypt. Which means the moon was plotted out. 14 days later, let me not give a head. Hold on, let's go. 14 days later is what? Passover, right? So what days? Never mind. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yahweh comes to Israel while in Egypt, gives him a calendar, Psalm chapter 104 and 9. He appointed the moon for seasons, and the sun and is going down. The solar and moon in here works together to determine the moon heads. They work together. Why? Because we are in this solar down in the year, but we need the moon heads to determine what time frame within the solar year we supposed to worship the moon heads on. Make sense? Exodus chapter 34 and 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, the feast of the first, first fruits of the harvest, and the feast of the gather at the year's end. Nature. Nature determined time in ancient Israel. Y'all ready? Let me say that again. Nature determined time in ancient Israel. That's why the most high didn't mind them practicing astronomy or studying astronomy because they had to study astronomy in order to know the times and seasons. Hallelujah! So what are the things that they used in nature? They had the sun. They had the moon. They had the stars. Equinox, moon, and year, and cyber. You know that, right? They had the animals. See the animals. The animals. Israel looked to the animals to determine the time and seasons. They would pay attention to migration, maybe birds flying south during seasons. Mm. They paid attention to agriculture. Say agriculture. That's why it's important for us Israel to get back to these things. And they determine the time based off the weather. Say the weather. weather. Seasonal rains will help us to know what time it was. Y'all getting this? Because remember, it was a dry season. The dry season, there were no moads at that time. So they know we ain't seeing no rain. That means this is not Moab season. But why would we be seeing rain during Moab's? Because the earth is all bad. Because Israel is not in its right place. Oh, man. Let me write that. The method of determining time by nature. I'm going to give you this back. And guess what? You can operate in this to this day. You just got to create a sundial. The sundial is easy to create too. You get a cup. Y'all remember when they showed up in school? Yes, that helps. You get the cup and the straw, and then you get it. Some of y'all don't even pay attention, so it was right. The method of determining time by nature. Let's look at scripts and see if we can do this today. All right? The Bible gives us a method in determining time by nature. The sun, the moon, and the stars are one way. Remember, they all have to work together, right? So we use the sun, the moon, and the stars to determine what season we're in, right? Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. We use the weather, say the weather. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 4 through 5. Y'all will give rain in their seasons. Yah is responsible for the rains so that the land can produce. Because one of the ways you determine Passover was by the what? Barley wheat, right? If no rain came, then no barley wheat would go. 
So when they see my body beat, they wasn't kind of a Passover. <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 24. Need to say in thy heart, let us now figure out what that will mean. That given rain, both the former and the latter, in this season, he reserved amongst us for appointed weeks of harvest. Then we have agriculture. Say agriculture. Exodus chapter 9, verse 31 to 35. I know it's a lot of information, and we're going to get to it, but it's important to notice. It's important to notice. Barley was, Exodus 9, 31 and 35, barley was in the ear. Say ear. Yeah. Ear, if you look at the strong recordings, that is the Hebrew word called a bit. A bit. So in order to know what a bit was, the barley had to be in the ear. The beginning of the weeks began once the sickle was put in a form, Deuteronomy 16 and 9. See agriculture? See how they use that? They use agriculture, they use the weather, and they use the sun and the stars. This was their calendar. Then they had the animals, they had the animals. Jeremiah 87. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times. And the turtle, and the crane, and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of Yahweh. Mm. Do you not know an animal goes when the flood is coming? Mm -hmm. How do an animal know that? It's in human nature. This whole system of time is dependent. Is depicted in stars with one thing. So can we use the system today? We can. You know why? Because it can rain. Now coming from Houston, man, it can rain in snow, in half four season, in summer in one day. <laughs> you get all four seasons in one day. You come outside with a coat on, you come back and work with shorts on. So we can't operate in this right now. But why? Why we can't? Obedience. The reason why we can't follow the system is because Earth is off right now. Earth is off because Israel is off. Once Israel gets back right around the book's eye, then the Earth will get back right around. That's why the Bible says the earth groans and moans at the what? The revealing of who the sons of Elohim is. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says once we get back into the promised land, it's going to rejoice, sprout out. It's so much that people will look at the land and say, no, that land is desolate. But it's looking like the Garden of Eden. Why? All because Israel is back by the line. So we can't follow the system until we start obeying. So obedience is key. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 through 14. Check out what it says. And it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently. Now, the word if, that is the biggest small word in the Bible. It's the biggest small word in the Bible. That means it's contingent upon something. Right? That means if you sin, you got a curse. If you obey, you got a blessing. If, say if. Yeah. And this shall come to pass that if ye shall hearken diligently unto the commandments which I command you this day, check out what he said he do. To love the Lord with all your enemy and your servant, with all your heart, with all your soul, that I will give you rain for your land. In this due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather corn, wine, as an agriculture, wine, and thy world. But if you don't, Israel, I'm going to just let the rain in time. Mm. So the earth is off balance because Israel is off balance. Mm. So in order for us to follow this, which we will, when we get back in the land, I think we're going to follow the Gordian calendar? No! 
That's why he's giving us time to get in tune with nature right now. Mm. That's why we out here asking go. Look at the moon. Look at the stars. Look at the sunrise. Look at the animals. Now pray for me with animals, okay? <laughs> you see me, brother, no. I don't, only animals I mess with is dogs. I don't do cats. I don't do fire roaches. I don't do fire grasshoppers. I don't do fire eggs. Not pretty good. But I gotta get in tune with those things. Because the animals know who you are. You know that? Do you know why the lion's mouth is closed? It's a recognized Daniel. It's a Hebrew. Man, huh? Hallelujah. So depending on the calendar you follow, affects the amount of melatonin in your system. That's deep. You ever see someone that work overnight and they sleep is off? They can get sick for these. Because they don't post me up at night. Why? And that usually only happens with Israel. Israel, because your body agrees with nature. Man, wow. oh Lord, say it again, say it again. So, the different calendars within Israel, this is important. This is important. I'm laying all this out. She got should have heard when I was to the UCB, but I have. We just ended up like, shoot, two hours, right? The different calendars within Israel. You have what's called a king's calendar. Say a king's calendar. You had a king's calendar. There were certain times that people go to war. You see many times in the Bible where it states the year of such and such, the year of such and such, the year of Hezekiah, during the year of King Darius, during the year of such and such. That is a calendar within a calendar. They would determine war times based on who was in power. So they wouldn't say, well, we went to war during the month of a period. No, they would say we went to the war when King Darius was here. Huh? Wow. It's going to get you good. Then you have what's called the people's calendar, or the land of people, right? For the people, their time usually started in at the fall because that's when they were playing. Priests didn't have to worry about playing. Why do priests didn't have to worry about playing? They had no inheritance. They had no inheritance. And they have to worry about food. Because every time a person sitting, they got to eat. <laughs> Everybody sit. Go get that man warm ready. <laughs> Y'all think it's a kid? They ain't worried about planning. I know somebody will have the food, and I'm gonna eat some man today. Okay. <laughs> then you have the priest calendar. Whole different calendar than the people's calendar, y'all. Yeah? They will deal with dates and times of the Moabs. They will give the dates and the times to the people, and the people will have to follow suit. Mm. That's why Leviticus 23 and Deuteronomy 16 and 1, you have different instructions given in these verses. Why? Because one set of instructions was given to the priests. And the other was given to the people. You don't see the day of atonement in Deuteronomy. You don't see it in the village. Why? Because that deal mostly with the priest. Before you come in here, make sure you're right. We got to deal with both. Because we the people and we the priest. How we are? So I'm showing you these different. Now, if you go in Deuteronomy 16, 1 and 17, they give you a breakdown of the Moabs. You'll see the one Moab missing you. You know, the thing about why? Because that was given to the Levitical priest. That's why it's in the book of Leviticus. Hallelujah. Now, again, yeah, you got to follow everything in Leviticus because you are a priest. Priest. And you're a priest. You're a priest. After the order of who? You guys have been talking about this. You see how it's wrong? All right, let's go. Okay, now I promise. I'm, I'm trying to make this quick as possible. I'm going to try to ask you to get it. Our history, we read it. Give you all this to get to a point. Let me say that. I know, I talk to you. So, listen. So, the Most High is not a destination that we 
what I mean. Even like to get you from point A to point B on a straight line. He like to do this. Uh, yes. 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 Anybody know? Yeah, I'm just right here. Like, I can just walk. Nah, go over here, walk around here, go up here, climb that, jump down, go. Why? Because the most high is more in tune with the experience than he is the destination. See, a car ride is an experience when you're going somewhere. If I drive here in New York, it'll take me 23 hours. And guess what? I get to experience a lot of things. I get to see cities I've never seen, places I've never been. But if I'm on a plane, I can get here quicker, but it's not going to be an experience here. Right, right. The most high, he, he's not, it's he really don't care about the destination that he can get the experience out of. Because not only do you want to experience your faith, he wants you to experience his love. Hallelujah. So I'm just walking out through to get to a third because I want you to enjoy the experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You like the area. All right, let's go. <laughs> Babylon teachings didn't die with Babylon. We won't prove that description. Let me say that again. Babylon teachings didn't die with Babylon. Their religion, their way of life, their culture, even their calendar influenced all, say all, all the great nations even to this day. Daniel chapter 4, verse 14 through 15. What can you say about that one? He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, cut off his branches, shake his leaves, scatter his fruit, let the beast get away from under him and the fowl from his branches. Nonetheless, leave the stump. Why? Because this nation, if you haven't seen our teaching, we have a teaching on the four pieces on our YouTube page. We break down who the four pieces we go in depth, and we pull by scripture the four pieces. This piece, the, the, the first piece was Babylon. Say Babylon. But he also described it with a tree. He said, leave the stump. Why? Leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with the being of iron and grass into the grass. Why? Because Babylon was going to influence all of the great nations. He said, leave it stuck. Because even though the tree is going to be cut down, the roots is going to be in every other great nation that comes out of us. Every other piece that comes out of us. Babylon is going to have some type of influence in mm. So, we went all the way to Greek captivity, where we follow crescent and dark moon worship. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. When the Greeks took over, yeah, they brought all our stuff. The Greeks, the Persians, they was a little nice. Like, they let us worship. They let us rebuild. The Greeks and y'all, people who love Greeks, Greek fraternity, yeah. Greek, leave the Greeks alone. They leave them alone. You'll find that in 1 Matthew chapter 1, verses 41 through 46. So, when Israel revolted against the Greeks and Maccabees, they had to rewrite their history. That's when you get the book of Enoch and the book of Jubilees. Now, the book of Enoch didn't come out back then. But Enoch came out about when they took over from the Greeks, they went to war, they had to rewrite those things. Why? Because Greeks burn all these stuff up. Mm. Like I know we don't have the full book of the book of Enoch, right? There's each scrolls in that. Ah, that's all other. That's all other. So let's go. Mm -hmm. The change in the times about the Greeks. Anybody got any questions? You can get something, I promise. Alright? The change in the times about the Kings. Now, remember, Israel split with two nations, right? Northern Kingdom and what? Southern kingdom, right? Northern kingdom. Got to know the kingdom is wicked. Boy, they knew how to worship Hasatan. Hallelujah. We can't talk about them because you ain't no better. Right? Alright. The Northern kingdom, check this out. First King, chapter 12, verse 32 to 33. And Jericho ordained a feast, right? In the eighth month, on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar. 
So did he and Bethel sacrifice an all cash that he had made, and he placed Bethel on the priest at the high places which he made. Verse 33. So he offered upon an altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the eighth of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised in his own heart, and ordained the peace unto the children of Israel, and he offered unto the altar on the I'm bringing these out because I'm showing you how this whole program of we progressive going before. This has been an argument amongst Israel since the very beginning. After the first captivity and all seven things, and they trying to restore back. No, we do progressive. No. And many people have a lot of Babylonian stuff in them, Persian stuff in them, and they couldn't get past it, so they wanted to keep it. As a guy, as a guy. Southern King, Second Chronicles 30, verse 1 through 3. As the guy said to all Israel, you know, both letters, also to Ephraim from Manasseh, that they should come to the house of, of Yahweh, Jerusalem, to keep Passover, for our verse 2. For the king had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep Passover in the second month. Say the second month. When is Passover what it's supposed to be? The first month, right? For they could not keep it at the time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gather themselves together to Jerusalem. Many kings changed the times because they were scattered. Different seasons were different, were different compared to the land that it was. So what I mean is, how did Israel determine the time again? They saw what? Some of them stars, nature, right? So if I'm living in the land and it only rains at this time, I'm probably gonna have to go back to Canada, right? But if I'm scattered to, I don't know, Ethiopia, if it rains in the month, then I may think that it's Passover time. So you see how the calendar got mixed up? Because they didn't strictly by nature, but once they got scattered because of their what? Disobedience. Then time frame started to get off. Why? Because they were in different land masses where the weather, where the animals move differently, where the sun and the stars move. So everything got going on. Making sense? Okay. We're going to get into it. I said all that to say this. Now. The Enoch in the calendar. Now, the Enoch in calendar. Um, I ain't even gonna go deep. Just look up the Enoch in the calendar. I don't believe it. It does not go by the moon. The Enoch in the calendar. I mean, just saying that, we just, we just throw that out, right? Because we need the moon to determine the world, right? Right. right? So we can't follow the Enoch in the calendar. Because they don't go by the moon. Even though the book of Enoch mentions using the moon. But that's all right there. Enoch 72, verse 3. It proves that you cannot follow the calendar without the moon and the sun. In the Bahina. The Bahina calendar does not agree with agriculture and seasons. So we can't use that. Because if I'm standing on a 364 calendar base, right? Just look at it and I'm following this Gregorian calendar, okay? Just think about it. How many days a year? 365, sometimes we're in 64, 600, you know. But if I'm only following 364 every year, I'm always going to be one day short, right? So eventually, that one day will catch up to me if I do it 20 times. So like I said, if I'm doing some coke right now, we know some coke out of all within the fall season. Right? September, October, mid frame, right? If I keep doing the Enoch calendar 20 years from now, I'm going to lose a day each year, and eventually I'm going to start starting my morning in like August, September, early September. That's all. Say that's all. Because the fall equinox hasn't even happened yet. Remember equinox? Spring equinox, fall equinox? At the turn of the year, that's when the season starts. That's important, y'all. Okay?
When you calculate it, 365 days go forward. I just said that the Lord is here. That's why you're not counting you without this. You go on research that. Look into it for yourself. Crescent moon influence. So we got four ways to get our calendar. Honestly, y'all, I don't even do the dog anymore because I don't even understand how you do the dog anymore. That's a whole Whenever the most high problem something out, that's a form of judgment. Crescent moon influence the captivity, okay? Now I'm thinking of this. I don't know how to say the name. Anybody ever heard? Anybody ever heard? Okay. I'm probably poorly portraying his name. But now on a this, right? Good job. He was the last king of the Neo Babylonian Empire, reigning from 556 BC, 17 years, for 17 years, okay? He angered the priests and the commoners of Babylon by neglecting the city's chief god, Mara. Okay, this is important. And elevating the moon god, Sin, S I N. So the last king, he elevated this moon god called Sin. The Babylonians didn't even like him. This king, Napoleon, left the capital for 10 years to build and restore mostly to Sin, leaving his son. Belshazzar in charge. Does Belshazzar sound familiar? I know the King James tells us that was Nebuchadnezzar's son. The Dead Sea Scrolls say otherwise. Mm. Oh. Let me see if I have it. Okay. Right. So, this king, if you go look into the Dead Sea Scrolls, you will see that they tied King Nebuchadnezzar, remember how they say King Nebuchadnezzar turned to a piece, a wild animal? That was actually this king. It wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. But the reason why they took this out is to confuse the whole world thing. If you didn't know about this guy, you would have looked into Crescent and worship and where it came from. It came from the Babylonian system. I know you really can't see that. That's the picture of the Crescent Man. This is that God, and you'll see his signs right here. Crescent moon. Who wants to follow Crescent moon? Muslim, say Muslim. So this guy, so what they did, now this is not saying, please don't go to the Bible way. Oh, I was lied to, and I was the Hebrew. No, all you gotta do is research. Our translators did get such stuff on, but everything is not on. Hallelujah. But if you go look into it, this king, that story of Nebuchadnezzar has turned to a piece. It was really this king. It was really this king. That's all the other story. I don't look into it. Israel adopted Babylonian and Mesopotamian calendar because they went into captivity with no priest. Why is that important? Let me see if y'all listen. Because the priest had the feast calendar. They had no priest to determine the time for them, so they depended on the Babylonian priests. Mm. Mm. You know how we came to Mary Captivity and we depended on Pastor Porchak and Priest of the Gospel? <laughs> Something like that. So they not only adopted the names of the monks, because we can see a break in the script where they were using Babylonian names, right? Names of the monk from Babylon, but they also adopted their calendar. Say calendar. Their calendar structure. This is only Babylonian worship. And you'll see, well, I ain't got any here, but you, if you research the Greeks, the Persians, all of them, they will take it from this calendar too. Because the Babylonians, they were smart now. Huh? They knew how to do stuff. Some of Israel lived well in Babylon and had to adapt to their culture. So what I mean is, don't think when they were in Babylon they were just, just in chains and being with them all the time. There was some of our Israelites that lived very well in Babylon. I'm talking about rich. But like like we got some people who lived rich in there. Right? Same thing in Babylon too. 
A lot of universal stuff. So let me say this, we've seen that. So yeah, I know we got the LeBrons, they live in good, you know, the Jay-Z's, they live in good, the Oprah's, you know, they all live in good, right? So let's say if, you know, if we go start our own nation, right? Let me talk about the break. We gonna start our own, usually they put those people in charge because they have all the money. They probably forefront most of the money. They have most of the power. They probably um, spark the whole thing of us going over there. So they are the ones that make the rules. Same thing when you're looking about bad money. They are all the rich and wealthy people making the rules, making the calendars. Why? Because there was no priest. A lot of them was in the background. That's why they had came out, they focused, acknowledging the sun. So I said that, because you will read the book of Enoch, it's talking about the sun a lot. Why? Because they had to rewrite the history, and it was trying to bring back the balance of bringing sun calendar into lunar calendar. Making sense? All right, hallelujah. I'm glad y'all did. I'm, I'm going to skip this slide, but look up the Passover letter of 419 B.C. The Passover letter of 419 B.C. I have it here, but I ain't going to go into that for the sake of time. But look at it. All right? We'll talk about it. If y'all want to talk, we'll talk afterwards about it. This is it's a lot of information. Crazy the Y'all ready? In AD 351 to 352, Roman persecution flared in the Jews revolt. They were soon crushed. Many Jewish towns were destroyed in the decrees issued against the local authorities and against Judaism. The privileges of the head of the Sanhedrin, the freedoms of the Sanhedrin itself, were curtailed. Roman pressure to conform Jewish, that's the word Jews, like the Jews now, Jewish time to Roman time. My fault, I ain't I put Jews for Hebrews. So the Romans pressured Hebrews to change their time to Roman time. Y'all remember what the beast was going to do? What he said? The beast was going to look to change the times and the seasons. We talk about that in our four beasts. We show what four pieces. This is the source, the encyclopedia of Judica. All right, so you can get all this information from okay? Under this pressure, Hillel agreed to limit the functions of the head of the same angel. I'm going to skip that. You got to read that. Well, let me read. As well as the angel itself, with respect to proclaiming the new moon, setting festival dates, and employing interclination of interclination, which we had in months to fit the old period of the Bible. Then, uh, inserting. inserting a 13th lunar month with the decline of Jewish power base in Israel, the Jewish community in Babylon had been rising and influenced to fill the vacuum. The letters that Jews do, they did all this, published details informing all Jews of the methods of the new calculated calendar developed in where? Babylon. From that time, the Asian and Judah ceased to function as maintain calendar experts. The little is thus giving credit for the present fixed, rapid, rabbinical calendar, but in reality, it originated in Babylon. So the Jews calendar that comes in was in Babylon. And you know, when they pay attention to it, they kind of really thought it was a present moment. It was just starting to the point of development in the rapid, the rabbinical calendar in use of today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to it. Calendrical text. Oh, this, this is good. In the origins of the Dead Sea Scrolls community, revealed that the Quran, I'm going to go around the Quran community. I know you used to read from it, I know y'all heard it. The Quran community. Right? The Quran community was important. Right? The Quran community, the Quran community was important. The Kumar community will open up a lot and prove Mashiach even greater. The Kumar community studied them, 
The Grumar community believed that there was a Messiah in the heavenlies atonement for their sins. They were looking for a Messiah to come. They also believed, check this out. We got this in our teaching, the Messianic Apologetics. That's all I'm sorry. Grumar community followed the Jewish calendar, which is different than the calendar that the Jews use today. More crucial than uh, paradox he reveals that the Quran community taught that the full moon said the full moon. The full moon com commenced the month, which would mean that Passover, which would occur mid month, would have occurred when the moon was dark. That's a cool. Ah. We almost have like two slides, I believe. The pattern, Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. The pattern Yah brought forth is what? Sun, moon, and its stars, right? Check this out. Because Crescent followers have to answer this question. What's the pattern the most I put in? Sun, moon, and its stars. Let's go back to 2018. Okay? So we really want to. We're going to look at the feast days during 2018. Okay? The first physical crescent in 2018, the calculation didn't add up. You ready? The first physical crescent came 317-2018. The vernal equinox was the vernal equinox. The turn of the year. We came. We have to wait till that turn of the year happens. How do we determine that? You and I have to look at the calendar, look at the sun, if it rises at 90 degrees, set at 20, 270, that means it's an equinox, right? The vernal equinox happened March the 20th, 2018. The Saturday year occurred April 4th, 2018. So how does the moon come before the sun? That's all. See, that's all. The pattern is broken based off of the crescent. Based, the, the pattern is broken based off of the first visible crescent pattern. It's all. Because how are you going to determine your moon before the front of the moon? The first visible crescent came 317-2018, right? But the barley is another thing. The barley didn't come until 318, 2018. Uh-oh. Remember, that was one of the methods Israel used to determine Passover. The barley. I will go back 20 slides before, but y'all wanted me to do that, so y'all better listen. So remember, the barley, what we talk about this thing along the ear, right? That here is another word for a bid, right? Which means Passover is going to fall in a bid. But the first visible crescent, which you'll find, I don't know, a lot of things you'll find. In 2018, the party became after the first visible crescent. So they were going to count their days after the party we showed, or after the first visible crescent. But if you're following the correct one, everything is going to just add up. You can't start your year until the problem you come in. Full moon dates on that time, I'm giving you the same year, that from Equinox was 320, 2018. The lunar year was, I think that's a type. Yeah, that's a type. Uh, I'm sorry. But the side, I have to go back and look up what the page was. And the side right here was 419, 18. And it followed the pattern. I think I was supposed to put 321, 18. I think that was the page. But go look it up. Alright? Morning month. This is important. Alright? Because every time you see the word month, you can always think that they say a month. Sometimes it means more. How did it say? Exodus 12, verse 2. This month, that word, H2320, Odesh, who word means to be new. Psalms 104, verse 19. 
the moon. H three three nine four. It's a different word for moon, right? The root word is month or moon. So sometimes it means to be new. Sometimes it means month. Sometimes it means moon. First Kings is an example of that. You see the word month in two, two, and the word month twice in one verse. And the eleventh year in the month of Bull, H3391, which is the eighth month, H2320, was the house finished by all the parts thereof, according to the fast measure. So it's been seven years good. Just give me an example. First Kings 82, you see Mark used twice here. All of the men of Israel separate themselves into the king Solomon at the feast in the month, H3391, Ephraim, which is the seventh one, H2320. So you can't always assume that the word month means the same. Alright? Psalms 81, check this out. This changed my perspective. I went from Crescent to Four. This right here got to put the nail in the coffin for me. It says, blow the trumpet in the new moon. Say new moon. Now that word new moon, people stop here and say, see? It say new moon. That's why they call it problem. But you have to keep reading. The new moon, H2320, which means to be new. That's all it means. It doesn't mean moon. It just means to be new. In the time appointed, that word is important. In the time appointed means full moon. H3667 on our solemn feast. So let me read it like the Hebrews read. Blow the trumpets and when blow, blow, blow the trumpets to be new in the time appointed. I'm sorry. Let me read it. Blow the trumpet. To be new at the full moon, that's what the top point is, in the full moon on our soul of feast day. Are we up? Okay. So that's Psalm 81 verse 2. You'll look that up, look into it. So, which phase of the moon should we be on? Genesis 1 and 16. And now he made how many lights? Two. Two great lights to bear the rule of the day and the lesson to rule the night. So, Whatever moon we go by, it has to rule the night. Right. Do the rest of the moon rule the night? No. It don't. The stars do. The stars are the design to rule the night. So when it's crescent, we can't go off that moon. We know the most time they show them that moon, because that moon must rule the night. So it can't go off that moon, because that ain't the great light that night. Do the dark moon rule the night? Do the full moon rule the night? Okay. Psalm 136, 89. The sun ruled the day. Or it's worse than you do that, but in the moon and stars. Why is it in stars? Because it will be a time when the stars will rule the night. But we tell strictly with the moon, that moon deals with these days. For it's mercy endured forever. So this is key. We're going to put it down in the bottom. What stage was the moon in when Israel left Egypt? That's key. Because if we can determine that, then we can determine how our own post look when Passover comes. Are we up? Yeah. Oh, somebody's scared right now. I'm scared. Exodus chapter 10, verses 22 through 23. This is important. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all of the land. For how many days? For three days. They saw not one another, neither was any from any place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. If the moon was already gone, we talked now, we're not, we're not, we go back, we're not talking about when they came out, we talked about the judgment that the most high just put in, okay? Follow the time frame. If the moon was already dark, or the moon, how could that have been a sign? How could that have been a sign? Y'all know the full moon give all light, right? So the most high would be dark in that, that's a great sign. Hallelujah. 
But if it's already dark, how can that be a sign? But if it was full and then it became dark, then that would be a problem. Hallelujah. Yeah. Check it out. Go deep. Exodus 12 and 1. Now, we're fast forwarding 14 days. Right? So remember, right after this play, tip play game, most I say, yo, listen, um, take them in, yo, it's gonna be 14 days, the market will bid, beginning of the month, the beginning of the month, by the moment of full, 14 days later, Exodus 12 and 6 happens. You will have a dark moment. Why? That's why when they came out of Egypt, Yah had to leave them by the pillar of fire at night. Because there was no light shining. Exodus 13, 21. Because the moon was not giving any light. Make sense? Yes. Still ain't no so Now the research, back in the Bible, people only travel when the moon was full of light. Because that was the only form of light they had when they traveled. If the moon was dark, they wouldn't leave. But at this time, you know the moon was dark, because the most high had to lead them by the pillar of fire and night. So why the full moon? We're going to do this and then we're done. So the reason why we're going to go with the dark moon, we're going to break down four things. One, it does not move the night. Hallelujah. It rises and sets with the sun. That's why I told you to write that website down, timeanddate.com. I want you to go research everything I'm about to give you. Alright? If the dark moon rises and sets with the sun, so that means it doesn't move the night. You can see it during the eclipse. So that means it's out during the day. You know, right? First, this is a progressive. Why we don't do that? One, it don't move the night. You know how to say that? Two, it can be seen at sunset. That's a reason. You're like, what's the big deal with that? It's a reason. I'm going to show you something. Four moon and no other phase of the moon. Does. It does not move the night. It looks deep. This is key. This is rubbing. This is key. It looks different in the southern hemisphere. So let's see if we all, all Israel's going by the crescent moon. Us in the northern hemisphere, we'll be celebrating the moon. But those in the southern hemisphere, they won't see a crescent moon. So they won't be celebrating. So we'll still be all. Mm -hmm. We still won't be in one accord. Why? Because the crescent moon is not the same on all four corners of the earth. When we see a crescent moon, they don't see a crescent moon. What? Go look it up. Say it again. Because they have a whole different, that's just way more side of time. Now, think about this. Answer your question. The most I knew is where we scattered to the four corners, right? Because it was prophesied, right? He knew he'd be scattered to different parts of the moon, right? He also knew he was going to need the moon to determine the moments, right? So why would he select a phase of the moon that's going to look different in one hemisphere than he does in another? Now one thing about the full moon, once it's full here, it's full everywhere. Hallelujah! Full moon. It rules the night. There's a full moon on the night. It rises, check this out. It rises when the sun sets. And it sets when the sun rises. So it don't come in confusion with the sun. Now I know some of y'all wait. I went outside, I seen a full moon that was not the full moon. I'm about to explain. Here how you determine if the moon is full or not. It's how you determine. You go to the time of day and you can look at it for yourself. So what you can do, figure out what the next full moon is, and then go right before sunset on one day and then look at it um, when the sun rises. This is important. 
If you see the moon right before sunset, that means the next night will be full. So if you go outside, the moon is full, and you see it right before sunset, that means the next night is going to be full. And you're not going to see it at sunset. It's just, when the moon is truly full, it's going to rise when the sun sets, and sets when the sun rises. Because it's truly ruling the night. And then the second when the night is done. Because he said, my time is done. Come on, son. <laughs> but when it's going through his phases, it can do the matrix. That just means he got crazy. Right? So if you see the moon the night before, if you see the moon right before sunset, the next night will be full. If you see it the next morning, so the next morning you wake up, you say, wow, I see the full moon. That means you missed the full moon the night before. Mm. But when the moon is in its true fullness, it rises when the sun sets, and sets when the sun rises. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It looks the same in the northern and southern hemisphere. So most I said, okay, I know this was going to be scattered to the four corners. I know they need the moon to determine the feast days. I got to have the full moon set to look the same no matter what part of the earth they scattered to. They'll know this is the full moon. But if you go by Crescent, everybody in the Southern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere and Nemo was to the moon wax back to Crescent, which will probably be about two weeks later. And everybody will be off. So like South America, if we go by Crescent, because you know some of us will be in South America, we're in the four quarters, right? So South America, they'll be, if we go by Crescent, they won't be doing it right now. They'll be doing it another time. Hallelujah. When y'all made the moon in the beginning, it was in its fullness. How do you know? How do you know it was in its fullness? Just look at everything else he created. Adam, was he a baby or was he a full grown man? Full grown man. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? Chicken. The chicken is in the chicken. Well, you say that. <laughs> the chicken. No sign of creating no egg and the egg hatch. He created the chicken. And the chicken lay there. How do we know? He created everything in its fullness. So he created the moon. You think he created half the moon? He said, was, no, he created in its fullness, in its light, to truly rule the night. How do we know? And like I said, look up the Quran community. That's a very important piece. The Quran community, Dead Sea Scrolls, proves a lot of things, y'all. A lot of things. Right? Any question? I know that was a lot. Go ahead and go to it. Yeah, I know how it's so. Remember, when you don't see the moon, and then, let me go back. Right here. Right so, if you see the moon right before sunset, now, now let me say this. After when when, when you when the moon's going before the next night, you'll see it right before sunset. Okay? So right before sunset, it'll look for you might have full moon. But if you see it right before sunset, that means the next night is going to be full and you're not going to see it before sunset. Okay? If you see it the next morning, like you wake up, let's say that day go by. Let's say next one called 11, and like the moon, and this year when the sun is up. That means you missed the full moon the night before. Okay? When the, when the moon is in its true fullness, you're not going to see it during the day. You will only see it at night. And when the sun rises, it's going to set. And like I said, here's how you, here's how you test that. Go get a calendar, figure out when the next full moon is going to be. Watch the moon like two days prior. You will see the night before, you will see the moon right before sunset. But the next night, you're not going to see that moon until that sun sets full. Then the moon is going to pop over. Who that's going to come Right there. Because <laughs> it's truly ruling the night. Hallelujah. 
Now, you may see it crushing or waxing gibbets. That's just a term of the word. You may see it going through forms, and you may see it all throughout the day. But that's just a different phases of the word. But we're focused on the fullness. Now, you look at the crescent, the crescent can be seen as sunset only. You won't see the crescent, the first visible crescent, it can be seen as sunset all the time. Whenever it's the first visible crescent, you can see it as sunset. So that means that true moon of the night. It's coming out on the sun moon. The dark moon, it rises and sets with the sun. Right? Mm. Everybody got it? 